All right, two days ago, I talked about um, Doctors Without Borders and how they had lost communications with uh, their team at the uh, Al Shifa Hospital in Gaza uh, and how the situation there seemed very dire. There were some 39 um, babies in incubators. Uh, the power was out, and they were having to be, um, I guess, um, manually ventilated. And I made a lot of uh, very dark jokes about how uh, Doctors Without Borders was, you know, just founded uh, in the 70s to be a Hamas front group before Hamas, uh, you know, was even invented. And so, you know, it was a very, it was all a long con and that Doctors Without Borders had worked for decades in all these different countries around the world just to gain credibility so that they would, um, you know, because they had actually been working with Hamas the whole time and this was all just a cover uh, so that they could create, um, anti-Israel propaganda during this war. Of course, I made all that up. I was, um, I was being, well, I was trying to exaggerate and be facetious, but a lot of the Israel supporters that I've seen online uh, and the punditry uh, seem to kind of agree with that. They don't, haven't literally said that, but they basically said the Doctors Without Borders is full of shit and they don't care about lives or else they would be demanding that Hamas release the Israeli hostages, which has nothing to do with Doctors Without Borders. Doctors Without Borders is not a political organization. Uh, they take care of people for free in poor countries. That's kind of their thing. They're a charity. And so all, all Doctors Without Borders has been putting out statements about is uh, the state of uh, their operations in Gaza trying to take care of sick and injured people. Namely, now they're down to 37 babies in, uh, in uh, incubators. Uh, I guess that, I, I would assume that means that two of the 39 have died, um, sadly, in the last couple of days. But they've got, um, they said, uh, 37 babies in incubators and then uh, another 600 patients in the hospital, all of whom... Uh, you know, they're just stuck there. And according to them, uh, the they're completely surrounded by the Israelis. People who try and leave get shot. Um, they can't even, you know, get... There are people who are, you know, dying in the streets. And they try and send, you know, paramedics out to bring them into the hospital. And uh, they're getting shot at. And so there are literally bodies... And I've seen pictures of these. I won't, I won't. I'm not going to show them here. I don't think YouTube would like that. Um, I don't think that YouTube is like completely controlled by Israel. I think that uh, as far as anti-Israel speech, um, you know, that's a little more permissible on YouTube than like let's say something like anti-Pfizer speech. But I still don't think YouTube likes uh, the the gore images. So or the dead bodies. So I'm going to try and avoid using those. That's why, you know, every every time I talk about Gaza, I just basically put up a picture of a rubble, you know, because that's kind of um, relatively inoffensive by YouTube standards. And so this hospital is um, uh, surrounded by just carnage. And they have no way out. And so Doctors Without Borders is saying they would be happy to evacuate the hospital since they are completely surrounded by constant bombing and shooting um they would be happy to try and get everyone out of there but they can't israel's not letting them do that they're not allowed to step outside of this hospital you know they're um they're lucky that israel hasn't directly bombed the hospital building itself yet and because even before all this attack started i mean uh, the Israelis were doing press conferences talking about how the hospital itself was a Hamas front and that this was a fake hospital. It doesn't exist. And that, you know, all those babies in incubators, those are, those are actually um, Hamas sleeper agents. Uh, they're just in those incubators waiting to wake up and, uh, you know, strap a bomb to their chest so that they can go kill Israeli children. And so, presumably, Israel considers all these people to be fair targets, the people who are in this hospital, uh, all the way down to the infants, the premature infants. But Doctors Without Borders said that they would be very happy, again, to try and evacuate if uh, Israel would offer them safe passage. But that has not happened. Maybe it will happen, who knows? But uh, considering there has been no power uh, the last couple of days, 
Uh, who knows how many more of the babies in incubators uh, will die before that happens. And even so, how do you move a baby in an incubator without power? Um, you know, it would take a lot of trips. I would think that you probably can't fit more than, like, what, maybe one in an ambulance at a time? How many ambulances do they have? And, and there's 600 other patients. I don't think Israel wants to sit around and wait for one ambulance to shuttle sick people and injured people and babies and incubators back and forth uh, between, you know, Rafa and uh, in Gaza City, especially when Israel plans to, well, and kind of has been, but to a lesser extent, blowing up Rafa as well. There is nowhere in Gaza that's really safe. Um, and uh, there's a lot of hospitals, as you might imagine, with a densely populated area of 2 million people. And none of those hospitals appear to be safe. They're all overrun, and they are um, overcrowded and under siege. Because all of Gaza has been under siege since October the 8th. Uh, supposedly now over 10,000 people have been killed, but that is not enough to satiate the bloodlust of uh, Israel and her supporters abroad. You know, uh, American pundits are having to twist themselves and do such pretzels in order to justify um, Israel's extermination of the uh, Palestinian race that they are having to now make – because the, the, the comparison between uh, the siege of Gaza and the bombing of Dresden uh, you know, is so obvious that uh, um, you, know, the, you don't even have to make the comparison. You now are hearing on the radio – conservative pundits justifying the bombing of Dresden, something that has been universally reviled since, I mean, really during World War II, people accepted, you know what, 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 just, what they just did in Dresden, that was awful. That should never be done again. You know, and that, that's what, why we need to have war crimes tribunals is to prevent stuff like Dresden from happening again. And lo and behold, Gaza is Dresden 2.0. And so all of the pro-Israel pundits have to go on TV and radio and defend the bombing of Dresden. They're defending the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Just the wholesale slaughter of civilians wiping cities off the map. Uh, that's a good thing, actually. Because how do you how do you uh, uh, how do you defeat um, Satan and his minions? Well, you have to send them all to hell, burn them alive. Bring them under the rubble. Literally send them to hell. And so you see all these uh, all these children in Gaza who make up a majority of the population. Uh, they need to go to hell too because they were born, uh, you know, in uh, uh, in Sodom. And so they're born Sodomites, and you have to, you know, just like in uh, uh, in the Bible, you got to wipe out the whole city. And a lot of people, you know, kind of take the interpretation. Um, you know, of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, and they think of it as, uh, you know, it, even if this wasn't literally the case, they think of it as uh, essentially a nuclear bomb. Just completely wipe out, wipe the cities off the face of the earth, and that's what happened. Sodom and Gomorrah are no more. And people believe that that's the right thing to do. That's what God chose to do. And so, well, you know, we should do the same thing. You know, and it's impossible not to uh, quote... <laughs> Anakin Skywalker when you're talking about Israel and Gaza. But in his words, not just the men, but the women and the children too. The emphasis is important because people like to ignore that. They just tell you, oh, well, you know, folks in Gaza, they're all Hamas. It's like, oh, really? Even the little kids? Yes. That's what Alan Dershowitz thinks. That's what Glenn Beck thinks. Uh, that's what... Uh, um, Gosh, I, I'm trying to think. I wanted to think of a of a really big um, uh, political figure, but honestly, I don't really. I can't really think of any big political leaders. You know, um, Trump has not really been around much, and um, he is so on this issue. He is so kind of back and forth on stuff. I don't really know what he believes. And then, as far as everyone else is concerned. You know, they're just not influential. You know, I, I mean, I rag on DeSantis and Nikki Haley because they basically 
turned into the same person. Um, and uh, they do have awful, awful beliefs when it comes to anything, um, you know, outside of, uh, um, you know, domestic American politics. Uh, you know, DeSantis is just as abominable as Nikki Haley on anything to do with the Middle East. But neither of those people are going to be president, so I don't really, I don't really think it's appropriate in this context just to rag on them. You know, it's fun to rag on them for their own sake, just because it's fun to kick, to you know, to punch down at them. But then you got Trump, who says terrible, who, who might say terrible things, and he said, I can't remember, I, he just said something terrible uh, this weekend at a rally uh, about the people in Gaza. Um, and uh, completely dehumanize them. But then again, he might say something <laughs> totally agreeable next week. That's kind of what you deal with with Trump. He, um, you know, he doesn't believe much of anything as far as that goes. Like not not hard. Like it, they're not hard convictions in his heart. You know, as as much as he's tried to suck up to uh, the Israel lobby, he has also pissed them off. Um, you know, because he told, I think, wasn't it his APAC speech way back in 2016 or 2015, in which he said directly, like, he looked right at the audience and said, I cannot be bought. And then all of their spidey senses went off and they were all triggered and said, oh my gosh, that's anti-Semitism. If you can't be bought by the Israel lobby, you're an anti-Semite. But, uh, you know, getting back to the topic of Americans on this issue. Um, this is one of the last big blind spots for a lot of people uh, where they might seem really reasonable um, on foreign policy issues, increasingly so, you know, over the past uh, few years. People haven't really moved much on Israel. And it's one of the most, like, black and white things I can think of because the two sides are so unequal you know it, it, it's tough you know as I've tried to do with comparing it to you know Ukraine and Russia these are apples and oranges Ukraine and Russia even though Ukraine is you know propped up by the United States it is at least a side that has a military you know and the same thing with Russia it's like well you know Ukraine it, it, Gaza is not propped up by anybody nobody can get to it people say oh well they're yeah, the Iran is propping up Gaza. It's like, you know how far away Iran is from Gaza? What are they going to do? Dig a tunnel all the way under the desert uh, and then in t up through the Iranian plateau? No. They can't get things to them. It's not like... Um, they don't have a patron uh, like, let's say, the Israel has in the United States. These are people living in abject poverty who are having bombs dropped on their head every day and there's nowhere to run there's nowhere to hide they have no control over the circumstances that led up to it they have no control over uh the uh, guys from hamas who decided to parachute into israel and kill a few hundred people they have no control over um uh, supposed hostages and when they may or may not be released they are just two million ordinary people who happen to be born into a prison and so if the uh, past month is not the most egregious slaughter of innocents uh, I've ever seen in my lifetime, then I don't know what is. The rate at which the killing um, is occurring is just, uh, it's incomparable to anything else. You can compare the death count, sure, to, let's say, the Ukraine war, but the, again, the Ukraine war been going on for almost two years then you got the war in yemen hundreds of thousands um yeah but that went on for years uh, the iraq war went on for years it was a million although now that i think about it considering how many years the iraq war was perhaps they got up to a rate of ten thousand i'd have to do the math i'd have to look at when that like when that final like around one million count was made and then um um divide that out by how many months uh, the war had been going on by then when they when the cutoff date was and then try and figure out what the average rate of um, devastation was per month how many thousands or hundreds or whatever presumably thousands of people were killed but hey when you're trying to compare something to the war in yemen or iraq um, in terms of uh, civilian deaths 
you're not in good company. So, with that said, uh, I will see you folks back here tomorrow.